still under construction. If a house was still under construction, would you live in it? If a school is still under construction, I'm talking about just the bare skeletal parts of it. Sheetrock on the walls. It's not fit for students to go in. And it's the same thing with relationships. There are a lot of people who are still under construction. They still have issues. They still have things they need to deal with. They still have childhood traumas. They still have, they're still hung up from their last relationships. They're still selfish. They're vindictive. They're manipul manipulative. They lie. They are violent. They're jealous. And yet and still, people continue to be with these individuals. Now, there's no way to tell from the beginning what they're like because they're going to present themselves. In other words, they're going to mirror your expectation. They cannot have an idea of the type of man or woman that you are. So they're going to emulate that and pretend to be that. But over time, they're not going to be able to keep up that ruse for very long. And you're always given those red flags, those clues. But what happens? That person normally has a have a particular quality that you're going to mistake for their character. There's a difference between qualities a person have and their character and who they are. So a person may be funny. They may be a, a giver. They may be very educated. They may be a great listener. Those are qualities. That's not their character. But sometimes you look at that, not to mention that they may be very attractive. And so you get caught up in that and then you become sexually involved with them. And then that's going to blow your mind because the worse a person is, the better the sex is going to be. They're going to put it down on you. They're going to make you smack it, flip it, rub it down, do all that because they know at the core their characters suck. But if they can get your head all, get your nose wide open and make your toes curl, you at that point, because you become one flesh with that individual through sexual intimacy, you are going to ignore everything. Even when your friends and family tells you something about the person, you're not going to want to hear it. Because technically you're sprung, as they used to say back in the day. And you become one flesh. And when you become one flesh, when you become soul tied with a person, that's a very difficult thing to get out of, but it's not impossible. But let's get back to the point of someone being under construction. A person that's always apologizing to you and telling you sorry all the time, a person that you continue to catch in lies, a person that you that continues to let you down, a person who's not able to provide, a person who's not able to uh, have good relationships as far as maybe with your family. Now, a caveat here is that sometimes you may have a family that is very mean or rude. You have to look at that. But at, but for the sake of this video, we're just talking about a person who seems like they want you all to themselves. They're jealous of your relationship with your family. Healthy relationships, your family is nice. Your family is trying to accept him or her. They're trying to include him or her in things, but this person is causing problems between you and your family. This person has a lot of issues. Beware of people who's always telling you everything that's wrong with them and about their terrible childhood and who took their teddy bear when they were little and what happened and all these things. You have to listen, but you must be objective. At that point, you need to analyze and realize that this person may be telling you some things, but oftentimes when they have this sad tale, you will see that there is some breakdown with them and all of a sudden you're carrying this weight and they begin to do certain things that's not right to the relationship, to the friendship. And because they told you about their sad childhood, you feel inclined to stay. But I'm going to say they're still under construction. They're not, in, they're not habitable. They're, this is not someone that you can have a friendship, a close relationship with. A friendship with this is not somebody that you can marry they're not ready now does that mean you sit back and wait for them to get ready no you move on with your life and you do the things that you need to do this person is responsible for themselves you cannot be responsible for another adult 
This is not your child. It is not natural for you as a woman to be raising a man. It is not natural for you as a man to be trying to raise a woman. That was her parents' job. That was his parents' job. Whatever the case is, it's not your job to step in like that because it's going to put a weight on the relationship. And the person is going to feel like they can get away with things. They are still under construction. Just as if you tried to live in a house that did not have all the 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 working parts to it, the window's not quite in yet, or the frame is in, but the glass is not in. The door frame is in, but it doesn't lock yet. The floors are in, but it still has not been covered with hardwood floors or carpet. It's still this raw, uh, hard surface with nails and things and dust because it's still on a construction. That is not a good place to be. And if you try to live in that you're going to be subject to all the elements of rain snow sleet bugs different things there's no heat there's no water it's just not going to be comfortable and that's the same way these relationships will feel they're not comfortable they're you're having problems you're being let down all the time you're being hurt you may be you may be abused and this person will cry and tell you oh i went through this as a child and she may do things and tell you, oh, I went through things as a child and my last relationship was like this. Cut that off. That is not your problem. She, he, they need to work on themselves. You have that friend that's jealous. You just can't be happy for you, sabotage you. When you find out things about them, when, you, when their lies come to the surface, that is your, that's God showing you. But what do you do? You find it out, you go to them, you ask them about it. Well, what's this? Well, they've been lying like from the womb. So they're gonna tell you something and then they're gonna start crying and then you're gonna feel guilty and then you're gonna stick with them. When that was God giving you your ticket out of there, this person's a liar, this person's a cheater, this person gave you an STD, this person is not supportive of you, this person's not your friend, they went behind your back. It's presented to you so you can see it. But most people, they continue on and you continue to get hurt. And the longer you stay with someone who does things wrong to you, whether it's a friend, a boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, whatever it may be, they lose less respect and they become more emboldened in what they want to do to you. And they become less contrite. So in other words, they even stop apologizing after a while. The thing that they were sorry about, now they flip it. And you're the problem. Well, what's your problem? And then if you stay with them too long, you're going to begin to act out. Because there's no way that you can you can stay with someone that is toxic and repeatedly breaking your trust and hurting you and not change. You may even develop the Stockholm syndrome where you begin you will begin to sympathize with your abuser. You don't think it's your abuser. That's my boyfriend. That's my girlfriend. But if they're continually doing things that's harmful to you, things that they know that you don't like, and they continue to repeat it, they repeat and apologize. Repeat, repeat, apologize. Repeat. Repeat, don't apologize, blame you. Repeat it, don't apologize. And after a while, they begin to say, I didn't do it. You're going to change because they're stripping you of reasoning. They're stripping you of um, your spatial thinking. They're stripping you of so many things. And you get used to that pattern of behavior that you begin to sympathize with them, that you're not you're no longer strong enough to go anywhere they don't need to work as hard to keep you because you have proven to them that you're going to stay there they're still under construction why is it hurting you why is this relationship hurting you they're still under construction and just like i gave you the example of the nice house it may be built in a nice neighborhood it's being built in a nice neighborhood it has potential and you may stay there because, oh, well, it's a nice neighborhood. The same way you stay with this person because they have some nice qualities about them. They may be helping you with some things. But that does not change their character. That person still needs to grow. But not on your watch. Their changes and the things that they need to deal with is not on your watch. Because if you don't stop, that person will destroy you or they will push you to a point that you do something crazy and you could be behind bars. Or you're behind bars, especially with women 
who can be extremely vindictive. There's a lot of vindictive, low down women walking around. They're entitled, they're very evil, but they're subtle with it. They will cry, they will accuse you of things, and people are automatically going to believe them. They'll abuse you and you're keeping quiet about it. And when you're trying to escape, she'll run herself in a door or do something crazy. These women are rabbit boiling crazy. They're out there and you're going to see it before she gets to that point where she becomes Glenn Close Jr., Alex Forrester Jr. from Fatal Attraction. Before she reaches that point, there'll be itty bitty things that she would have been doing all along before she becomes a full-blown monster in your life, ruin you, tell a lie, say this thing. Now you have to register as a sex offender because she's, she's, she's lied. Now you, your, your life, your livestock, your livelihood, what you're going to do is gone because of her. And they walk around and they want, to, they want you to get them pregnant. Don't listen to these women telling you that they're on birth controls and I can't get pregnant. No, she's fertile. That's when she becomes a nightmare. Men can do the same thing. Oh, I want you to have my child. You have your child and he becomes a monster. You can't move on with your life. Nothing. There are always telltale signs along the way. They're not your responsibility. Even with children. Of course, with your children, you're going to put in more time. They're your seed. But at some point, as they get older, you have to allow them to be themselves. But in this case, we're just talking about relationships. Why is it hurting you so much? Why are you constantly being disappointed? Why are you constantly being let down? Why are you arguing with different men and women that they're talking to, going behind your back? Why are you always disappointed by this friend? Why do you find yourself having to hide your accomplishments from this jealous friend, jealous individual, jealous spouse, jealous relatives? Why are you doing that? Because they are under construction and you're still trying to establish and maintain and build on something that is shaky and not complete. The best thing that you can do for yourself is to remove yourself from it. They need to work on themselves. You don't go to counseling with them. You don't do all that stuff. You're not the problem. They need to go and end the relationship and move on in with your life. Because if you don't, you're, you're going to miss out on the life experiences you were meant to walk on because you're over here in this dilapidated situation. And as cold as it may sound, you have to realize you only have one life to live. I always talk about, you know, I make the sound right here. This sound happened in time today. I may be able to repeat that sound, but you know what? It's a different moment in time. I can never go back and get that. You think of all the years and months and weeks that you've dealt with this person, all the tears you've cried and all the disappointment and all the mess and how many times you had to go to the doctor and get a colorful cervical exam or going to get rotted, guys, because you got something. You can't get back your life. And it is a vapor. And you don't want to waste your time and your years with someone who's stressing you out. You're losing your hair. You don't look as good anymore. You don't have any hope and feeling because you're living in the dilapid. You're in a dilapidated state. You're still connected to someone who's broke down. And you're not mom and you're not dad. You cannot help them. They must stand up on their own two feet because if you become their everything and you are the only way they can get better, you're going to lose something and you're going to miss out on life's opportunities. You're going to be on this path that was never meant for you. They're still under construction. And you should not be in a relationship with a hard hat on and steel toe shoes and a tool belt on it and a caulking uh, device. To plug holes and to fix everything because if you look at construction real life construction workers what happened their hands are getting hard all these different things they have a lot of stuff on them right because that's their job 
And that's what will happen with you. You're going to get hardened. You're going to be messy. You're not going to look the same. You're not going to recognize yourself. Because you were never meant to do that. It's a tough decision. But if you don't stand strong for yourself, and you don't take up for you, and you don't protect you, don't expect them to do it. 